Can we take it from these military exercises that we are seeing a deepening of this alliance between Russia and China? No, I think it's a wrong description because this kind of relationship, however close it might seem, is not a relationship of alliance because China and Russia are just strategic partners, but it's not a relationship of alliance. Yes, it is deepening. John Ball, can I I come in there? It it is a bit more than just strategic partners. There is a no limits pact, which was announced before the the, the Beijing Winter Olympics. We've subsequently seen the the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We've seen China step up its military exercises, war games over Taiwan and increased threats there. And now these exercises, that would tell us that this is getting beyond just a strategic alliance, wouldn't it? Well, uh, many people, especially in the West, are hooked up with this word unlimited. But uh, to use that word, that means that we would just sort of make uh, great efforts to develop our relationship. But in the document where this very word is mentioned, actually it's also mentioned that this relationship is not directed against any third parties. So actually, in this document, it is also mentioned that uh, it is not uh, uh, aligned relationship. So coming back to your questions, China's uh, joint exercises with Russia is nothing new. It actually started in, in 2003, and it's also seen by naturally or multilaterally within Shanghai Cooperation Organization. But it, but it is increasing, isn't it? I mean, this is the point. If you look at the timing of this and the more frequency of these activities and the size of these activities, there is an argument that it's increasing, isn't it? No, it's not to increase, it's regularized because it has been like this more or less uh, for uh, ever since 2003. Why these exercises? Who are you preparing for conflict with? As a, a military, you should be prepared for all situations. And uh, this is uh, found uh, in all countries. It is found in NATO. So with uh, Russia, of course, uh, we too are great countries in terms of size, in terms of our strengths. And we definitely... Uh, would find it necessary to strengthen this kind of uh, cooperation. And for China, it's uh, particularly useful in that China actually has uh, enjoyed the peace as, uh, since 1979. But, but Russia isn't. Ru- Ru- Russia's at war with Ukraine. That yes. would lend a more sinister edge to these exercises, wouldn't they? You're carrying out military exercises with a country that is invading and carrying out war against another country. That changes the nature of these exercises, surely. I don't think so, because it was done before, and it actually is the most interesting part for me is uh, how much uh, forces actually uh, Russia could use in such kind of uh, joint exercises, because uh, certainly they, they are somewhat short of uh, manpower uh, in the war in Ukraine. So, uh, But, the war but, is- but Joe, Joe, Joe Ball, the point here I'm trying to get is that China is assisting Russia's military capacity and its capacity to carry out conflict at a time when Russia is already making war on Ukraine. You are assisting now directly Russia's ability to make war, surely. No, I don't think we're assisting the capability because... But that's what the exercises are about, aren't they? To increase your capacity. No, I don't think so, because this is a kind of a a natural exercise. So we are also learning from this kind of exercise to enhance our own capabilities. So in terms of Russia's capability, whether that's enough for, for Ukraine or not, there are many doubts, and in the beginning, they, they don't seem to fight quite well. So is there, there are plenty of lessons so, for so, them? To- so you're helping them to fight better. This, this is the point. And, and the point I'm trying to make here, Joe Bohr, is that you're learning from the Russians as the Russians are learning from you. Russia is making war in Ukraine, and China is threatening war against Taiwan. Wouldn't countries in the region and other countries look at this and see not just a deepening alliance, but a more aggressive one? But I, I'm happy you mentioned the Taiwan because that is totally another issue. And you know how it actually was triggered by Nancy Pelosi's visit. Uh, this, uh, of course, is aftermath uh, of, her, of her visit. This is not uh, liked by many uh, people in the government of the United States, but uh, she actually is a very person that has changed the status quo. But the fact of the matter is that China has been threatening to use force against Taiwan if necessary and has stepped up those military exercises. I want to get back to the Vostok exercises. Can't we take away from this that this indicates as Russia makes war, as China threatens war, as the two of you prepare each other to make war and to increase your capability for that, that this is a more aggressive alliance? I think you are putting too many things all together. 
Uh, this is not, certainly not the case because the Taiwan issue is China's domestic issue. The war between Ukraine and Russia is, of course, between two sovereign states. So these are totally different things. And China certainly would uh, have uh, 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 used its own uh, strengths to talk to these two countries. And it's in our own interest to see Europe come into peace as well, because uh, otherwise the China's uh, many interests would suffer. China's belt road. Why doesn't, why doesn't Xi Jinping in that case, if he can carry out these military exercises, why does Xi Jinping not pick up the phone to his friend Vladimir Putin? And that's how the relationship is being described as, a, as friends and say it's time to end the war. Well, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, in his shoe to tell him uh, what he got to do. But I believe that the China's position is already self-evident. First of all, China is not providing Russia any military assistance as widely speculated. And that shows China's position of neutrality or even impartiality in this case. Joe jo Ball, can I just finish with an observation about India? Um, India, of course, is a member of the Quad. And the quad between Australia, Japan, the United States and India is seen as a, a curb on, on Chinese influence or assertiveness in the region. Why is India also a part of these exercises? If you look at the quad, it just has a, a military element of a military exercise called Madaba, and that's it. India is not an ally of the, of the three other countries. So India's position definitely is very important because India's relationship with Russia actually is also very good. It could be said even better than China's relationship with Russia because it actually was nonstop even during Cold War. So this kind of good relationship between India and the Russia is a uh, uh, well known, so it is understandable. Joe Boy, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. It's always good to have you on the program, sir. Thank you again. Thank you, Stan. Thank you very much.